Hi guys, this is Satya from Dwarven.com and in this video, we'll show you how to flash the latest nameless AOSP ROM based on Android 14 on the OnePlus 9 Pro. So please take a backup of all the data on your phone and then let's get started. First and foremost, you'll have to get hold of Android SDK platform tools. So get it from my guide and extract them onto your PC. You could extract them anywhere you want. In my case, I've done the extraction in C drive and as you could see, these are the files of platform tools. Once you've done the extraction, you will now have to enable USB debugging and OEM unlocking on your phone. USB debugging is required for ADB command, whereas OEM unlocking is required to unlock the bootloader on your phone. So let's now enable both this toggle. For that, go to the settings menu. From there, you will have to go to about device and then go to version and tap on build number seven times. You will get a prompt that you are now in developer mode. So go back, then again go back, go to additional settings and you should now see developer option. Go there and enable the toggle next to OEM unlocking, then tap on enable. Likewise, enable the toggle next to USB debugging as well. You will now get a prompt tab on OK. You might get an RC key prompt as well. In that case, check mark always allow, then tap on allow. And with this, debugging is now enabled. Let's verify the same. So go to platform to folder address bar, type in CMD and hit enter. This will launch command prompt inside platform tools. Now type in ADB devices and make sure that you're getting a serial ID. If you're not getting any ID, then unplug and replug your phone from the PC. Enable and disable USB debugging. Tap on revoke USB debugging. Use the official USB cable that came with your phone and use the USB 2.0 port on your PC. So carry out this USB tweaks and make sure that you're getting an ID. Once you're getting this ID, your next course of action is to unlock the bootloader on your phone. Do note that unlocking the bootloader will wipe off all the data and it might also make the warranty null and void as well. If that well and good, you could refer to my guide or the video or let me show you once again how to get this job done. So just type in ADB reboot bootloader and hit enter and your phone will now reboot into fast boot mode which will take only a few seconds once that is done type in fast boot flashing unlock and then hit enter you will now get a prompt on your phone use the volume key to highlight unlock the bootloader and press the power key to confirm your phone will undergo a wipe and once the wipe is done your phone will boot to the os and the bootloader will be unlocked and from now onwards, you will also get an orange state warning message. You may remove this message by flashing the modified abl.img file, which is there in the firmware. That's not a cause of concern. Or you may leave the error message like that itself. Anyways, once your device has undergone a format, it will now boot to the OS and this could take up to a, a minute. So let's just wait for the phone to boot up and then we'll move ahead with the next step. So guys, our phone has now booted to the OS. Let me quickly skip the initial setup process and then I will move ahead with the next step. Let me skip all of these steps as well. So let's select any region whatsoever as of now. That's not a cause of concern. Let me agree to the terms and condition. Then hit the next button and again let me skip this as well for now. And let's accept all the terms and condition and let me skip this as well. And now you, you might have to re-enable USB debugging so let's uh, hit the done button and with this we are inside the OS so let me enable the debugging and then we will move ahead with the next step so go to the settings menu once again go to about device go to version and tap on build number seven times now again go back go back go to additional settings you should now see developer option go there and enable the toggle next to OEM unlock USB debugging which is enabled so well and good now let's move on with the next step. Now you will have to get hold of the Android 14 ROM, which is the nameless AOSP ROM. The ROM already comes inbuilt with the G apps. So don't download G apps. Just get hold of the ROM file and the recovery file. Regarding the recovery, there should be three IMG file, which are the, let me show you. It will be vendor boot, boot and DTBO. These three will be in the IMG format and then you have the ROM zip file. So get hold of the ROM zip file as well. From here, let me show you that as well. So this is the latest build of the ROM file. Get hold from here. Once you have got the ROM and the plat and the IMG files, you will have to transfer all the files inside the platform tool folder. So first off, let me transfer the IMG files. These three are the IMG files. Copy it from here and transfer it inside the platform tool folder. Likewise, transfer the ROM file as well. This is the ROM zip file. Transfer it here as well. Moreover, for the ease of convenience, let's rename the ROM file to something shorter. So let's just rename it to ROM and the complete name becomes ROM.zip. So as of now, ROM.zip and the three partition IMG files should be there inside the platform to folder on your PC. If that's well and good, let's now move ahead. Okay, one more thing. 
before moving any further ahead you will have to be on android 13 firmware so make sure you're on oxygen os 13 android 13 firmware if that is not the case then you may do a downgrade for doing a downgrade let me show you there are quite a few methods so if you are on android 14 then you may directly flash the android 13 downgrade firmware using either the fastboot rom or the official downgrade firmware i made a separate guide on the same you could refer to my guide and get this job done so let me show you this guide there are quite a few ways of doing the downgrade the three methods are the first one using the official method in this case you have to flash or do the local install or the local upgrade of the official downgrade firmware the next method is by using the fastboot method in the fastboot method you will have to flash the oxygen OS 13 android 13 fastboot rom for your phone which in our case is android oneplus 9 pro so you just have to extract the oneplus 9 pro firmware on your pc and once that is done simply launch the install.bat file and it will flash the android 13 firmware and the downgrade is complete or if you want you may also take a little bit longer method the, lo the lengthiest method is the most failsafe approach in this you will first and foremost have to use the msm tool this will take you to android 11 after that you may do a couple of ota install and then you will be on android 13 that is the most failsafe approach but also the most lengthiest one it will take quite a lot of time and effort so either use the fastboot rom for flashing or do a local install or you may use the msm tool and then do a couple of ota install but make sure you are currently on oxygen OS 13 firmware if you are on that firmware then let's go ahead and flash the firmware so first off now type in adb reboot bootloader and hit enter and your phone will now reboot into the fastboot mode it will take only a few seconds so let's just wait for that to happen and once that is done you will now have to type in fastboot devices and hit enter and make sure that you are getting a serial id if you are not getting any id then you will have to install fastboot drivers i have made a separate guide and a video on the same you could refer to my video and get the job done once you have installed the drivers right click on the window icon and select device manager then expand the android phone section and make sure that your phone is being shown as android bootloader interface so this as well as the serial id next to fastboot signify that your pc is able to read the phone in fastboot mode and we are now good to go ahead so let's now get started with the flashing process so first of all you will have to flash the super empty img file this is completely optional but i will still advise you to flash the file because in some cases it might give you the errors 7 while doing a side load i have made a separate guide on the same as well as to why you need to flash this file so if you don't do so then you may get the error applying update 7 error message while doing the adb side load of the rom file so that is why you will have to get hold of the super empty img file regarding this there are a couple of rom that gives out this file as of now i will recommend you to go with the official lineage os build so let's get get hold of the file from the lineage os website for our phone just a minute this is the oneplus 9 pro and download the Lina super empty img file from here this file will work across all the aosp rom and across oneplus 9 pro but it will only work on oneplus 9 pro don't use this file on any other phone although you might use this file across any other rom as well that will not be a cause of any concern anyways we have got the super empty img file let's now check it out so this is the file again transfer this file to the platform to folder on your pc so let's do that as well and first off i will wipe the super partition using this file so copy the command and paste it in the cmd window and hit enter and it's now done once that is done we will now get started with the flashing process first off let's flash the gtbo file to the gtbo partition once that is done you will now have to flash the vendor boot file to its partition so copy the command and paste it as well after that you will have to flash the boot img file to the boot partition as well so let's just wait for that and let's now copy the fastboot flash boot boot img command and paste it here once the boot file has been flashed we could now boot our our file to the newly flashed custom recovery so type in fastboot reboot recovery and paste it here and our phone should now reboot to the aosp recovery this will take a couple of seconds so let's just wait for that to happen and then we will move ahead with the next step so let me show you that as well and we are now inside the 
nameless AOSP recovery as you could see. So your first course of action is to do a format data. This will wipe off all the data from your phone. So make sure you have taken a backup beforehand. If that's well and good, select factory reset, then format data, factory reset, format data, and the data wipe as you could see is now complete. Once that is done, again go back to the home screen. And from here, we could now start with the ADB side load process. So select install update and choose ADB side load. And with this, your phone is now in the side load mode. Let's verify the same. So open CMD window and type in ADB devices and hit enter and make sure that you are getting the side load keyword. As you could see, if that's well and good, we could now start the side load. So type in ADB side load and the name of the file, which is rom.zip and hit enter. And the side loading will now start. It will take up to around five to six minutes. So let's just wait for that to happen. So guys, as soon as the flashing is complete, you will now get a prompt asking if you want to flash any other zip file. If you want to flash any other zip file, then tap on yes. If you don't want to flash any other zip file, then tap on no. As of now, I don't want to flash any zip file. So I will tap on no and you will now be taken to, to the recovery home screen. From here, you may select reboot to system and your phone will now reboot to the newly flash OS. I am again repeating, if you want to flash any other zip file, then tap on yes and your phone will then reboot to the recovery mode. Once it reboot to the recovery, you must then do an ADB side load and flash the desired zip file. On the other hand, if you don't want to flash any zip file, then tap on no and simply select reboot to system and your phone will now reboot to the newly flash OS. As you could see, it's the boot animation has appeared, so the flashing is successful. Do keep in mind that the first boot up will take up some additional time frame. This is completely normal and nothing to worry about. From the subsequent time, that will not be the case. So let's just wait for a phone to boot up and then we'll move ahead and check out the ROM as well. So guys, we are now inside the setup process. So let me quickly set up my phone. I will skip the most of the useless stuff as of now. If you want, you may restore the data right away itself or you may restore the data after booting to the OS. Both the things will work. As of now, I'm skipping all these stuff. And with this, we are inside the nameless AOSP ROM. As you could see, this is the app drawer and this is the QS files. And this is the settings menu. And from here, you may get hold of the usual tweaks and tricks. As you might be aware, the nameless AOSP ROM does not behold quite a lot of feature as compared to Evolution X or CR Dwight. It does not have quite a lot of features. On the other hand, it is somewhat more close to the official Pixel UI, the original Pixel UI, the AOSP experience. You will not get tons of features, but for many, they don't even want that features. You will get all the features that you get in the original AOSP ROM, which is the Pixel UI and UX. For instance, if you go to the wallpaper and style from here, you may choose the different type of clock style. These are the same which you get on the Pixel phone. For instance, let's choose this one. And if I now lock my phone and if you have a notification, then the clock will be shifted to the top left. So remove the notification and you will get the clock at the bottom as at the center. Sorry, as you could see here. Apart from that, you may choose from quite a lot of font style, the clock style. Then you may also choose the color. Do keep in mind that these colors are picked up from the dominant color of the wallpaper, which is a part of Material U theming engine. So whatever wallpaper you choose, the color will be given accordingly. As you could see, the color has not been changed. It will pick up the major color from the wallpaper and then theme the entire UI and UX accordingly. As of now, let's go with the official one itself. Apart from that, you can also choose some of the other colors and from here as well, there are quite a lot of theming options. Then if you talk about the shortcuts and home screen in the home screen, you will have the option to enable theme icon. As you could see in the app drawer, it has been implemented. Likewise, you may extend the app grid and choose 5 plus 5. And with this, so these are all the basic customization that you will get on your phone and the OnePlus camera, which we have got is actually from the OnePlus 11 phone so that's also quite great to see and apart from that it's just the usual tweaks and tricks that you get on a pixel phone so guys on that note i round up this video if you have any queries with regard to any of the steps do let me know in the comment section and thanks a lot for watching